Welcome to the 2018 BlizzCon wrap up. It is Monday, November 5th. The, uh, what is it, two days after the con has closed. Uh, is my hat crooked? Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Bam, there we go. And we are going to be talking about everything, everything, everything that happened at BlizzCon. Well, maybe not everything, but a lot of stuff we're going to be talking about. Uh, yes, yes, you may have noticed. Those of you guys watching the live stream may have noticed slight wardrobe change. Just slight. Diablo Immortal is the greatest thing to happen to the Diablo franchise. And, uh, and uh, uh, that's the only thing I can really think of to, to really go against my, uh, my actual uh, beliefs on this. Uh, so, <laughs> no, I'm kidding. No, this is not a paid endorsement. Uh, I did pick up this stuff. We're going to open up. We're going to talk about loot and stuff. But before we get there, actually, because we're going to be showing clips from, the, uh, 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 from BlizzCon itself, with the intent to provide commentary and context to what we're talking about. Uh, it is entirely possible that certain segments of this will be censored on YouTube because YouTube is a little sensitive to that kind of stuff. Uh, whenever you, um, uh, whenever you post, uh, the, uh, you know, your videos and everything to, uh, uh, to the, to the service. Um, so if you're watching this on YouTube and you notice that there's a segment that's blurred out or something, sorry, YouTube got to it first. Um, but everything that I'm showing you guys is stuff that is readily available and free to access. Okay, these are things that are, like, for example, BlizzCon virtual ticket. We're going to be showing clips from that. Those are all free and readily available for anybody that wants to watch the opening ceremony. They allow, they have that on BlizzCon.com. Uh, and the rest is basically just context things from IGN, talking to, uh, talking to, uh, Chen and everything. So we have, we have a lot of, we have a lot, I mean, seriously, this is like the most news that we've done in a single show. Um, Probably uh, since like the Digihoo days, like there's probably like maybe one or two episodes I feel that's had just as much content. So I'm gonna try really hard to 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 go through this stuff uh, as about uh, as quickly as I possibly can. Let's turn up that fan a little bit because apparently the sweater is gonna <laughs> it's, it's a little warm. Um, so first, let's talk about loot. Let's talk about like stuff that I got, man, because I never get stuff like besides besides the usual stuff. Let's go and start with the usual stuff. Ugh. The usual stuff would be this. This is your BlizzCon goodie bag, or box in this case, right? Now, I'm not gonna open it, because I pretty much just keep these and then sell them. Actually, wait, hold on a second, I can't open this. Oh yeah, there you go. I didn't realize it was so easy to open. I thought I had to break a seal or some of that, but since I don't, here we go. So you get a book, it's an art book. And then you get a coin. Let me see if I can get all this stuff out for you guys. I don't want to, yeah, there you go. Everything else is actually like kind of behind plastic, it seems. Oh man, of course. So you have a, a coin, a medallion, hearthstone items. Uh, you have a keychain. You have a little Diablo character that's like so tiny, so tiny. It's like, it's this little guy here. You know, maybe it, maybe it reminded me of, the, of uh, 2010. We had the, uh, um, like the Deathwing Dragonling or something like that. It was like a mini Deathwing. But that thing was huge. It was like this high. It was like from here to here. It was pretty big. But now you get you get that, which is fine. A little four inch character, I guess, is probably fine. Some people are okay with four inches. All right, so we're gonna close that. Don't don't wrinkle it up. I don't open these because I'm all like, eventually, eventually, I'm gonna like sell this stuff. And I'm like a hundred years old, and I need to like add some money to my estate because I'm broke and I'm leaving nothing for Declan. I'm gonna need to like sell some of this stuff up. <laughs> All right, so that was the goodie bag. You can go and actually see more details on that. There's some virtual items you get as well. We won't talk about that because they're not as good as last year's. Uh, let's see, I did go to the store. I never go to the store. I never do because the line is always ridiculous. It's always crazy long and I just never get over here. Uh, I never want to mess with it. Well, as it turns out, the line actually moves pretty fast. Like <laughs> it does, it moves. It's pretty respectable how they set this thing up and they actually get the line moving through pretty quickly on the first day. I don't know about the second day or third day, but I what I heard before was you don't want to go a second, third day because everything you want is sold out. So I didn't go. Uh, I went the first day. Uh, I got this hat. Obviously a Warcraft fan, so I'm going to get the hat. I got this jacket because, as I mentioned before, I'm too small for a lot of my hoodies, as you guys have seen on stream. My hoodies are like draped over me, uh, so they don't fit me anymore. So uh, I had to get a new sweater. This one is awesome. Uh, it's StarCraft. Love StarCraft. Well, not really playing it, watching it. Also got a StarCraft hat because 
Starcraft, of course. Uh, and uh, I left the sticker on this one. Uh, per recommendation of uh, Lack, you know, our mod here, Lack Tarted, her son, Sam, uh, I asked him because he had an Overwatch hat and he had a sticker on. I was like, hold on a second. Are we back to leaving the stickers on? And he said, yes. And I said, all right, you're 10 years old. You probably know better than I do. I will leave the sticker on this one. And so I did. Um, what else? Also got. Also. Uh, also got this. I can't wait. I can't wait to wear this. Ugly sweater. So good. Ugly sweater. Look at it. I can, you can just wear this out. It's like, oh, it's an ugly sweater. But if you don't know Warcraft at all, you'll have no idea what it means. It's pretty great. It's just like, it's subtle. God, fuck my eyes. My eyes. Uh, I also picked up a couple other things. These are just like random items from the floor. This one I, re I was really happy to get. Just added to the pile of other... Uh, other slip bags, whatever they call these things, like string bags, whatever. So I'll be getting ahead of that to the pile, but I kind of like this. This is a Nintendo Switch. So what I'll do with this is actually I'll be able to carry around my Switch in it. So that way, if somebody's looking to steal my bag, there will be no question whatsoever as what's inside of it and whether or not it has any kind of value. Because I'll be advertising on the front of the bags. Perfect. <clears throat> Let's see. Uh, also, when you buy this stuff, now what I say? Hat times two, sweater, sweater. Okay? So what do they give you? This fucking bag. This is seriously, it's... <laughs> I, don't, I don't know how to stress to you guys how big this bag is. I guess, hold on a second, there's a thing in there. Hold on, let me get that out. But like, it is, it is, it is a big, it is huge. It's like, I could probably like, get... Like, and I have room. I have actual room in here. It's, it's a big bag. Uh, so that was awkward to carry around, but next time I go to Safeway or, or Lucky's or shopping or whatever, and they say, did you bring your own bag? <laughs> How could I? <laughs> I want to be like, yeah, don't worry about it. Just put it in here. <laughs> just, put the, <laughs> just put everything here. It's totally fine. <laughs> uh, other random things I picked up. Uh, I picked up, uh, uh, I have, uh, some books, actually, this is completely not WoW related, but this is actually a gentleman that I met last year, uh, because when you go to BlizzCon, it's great, because you can just, like, talk to people, everybody's there for the same reason, you can't just talk to whoever, and so this guy, uh, was sitting at the bar, he had a, uh, he was sitting at a bar table at the Marriott, and, um, I went over there and just started, just started bullshitting and whatever, and it turns out he's an author, he writes a bunch of books, so he's got, like, Lodestone Files, and the Lodestone Files, uh, the side effects, side effects, and, Chronicles of Bob, how fitting for this, for this particular, um, um, uh, BlizzCon, right? Bob. Uh, anyway, so he, he, last year we talked and everything's real cool guy. And this, this year, uh, he actually brought me signed editions of his book. And I thought that was really fucking cool. Like how fucking awesome is that? I met an author, uh, and now I have like signed books of his to so stay awesome sauce. Best wishes. It's awesome. So yeah, it's Robert, Robert J. McCartney. Um, it hooked me with books. I was really touched by that. I don't know why. That was awesome. And then Lack killed a fucking bug with it. Listen. All right. Quick story. We're in my hotel room, right? And, uh, now it wasn't, it's not exactly like, it's not exactly the Ritz, right? Uh, I had a table that I put all of my stuff on and I had these books just kind of sitting in a pile like this, just nice and neat. And then there was a cockroach that just like, Came out from my bag, I guess. And Lack was like, like mom reflexes, dude. Like she was like, ah! like, and she just like picked the books up and just wham and just, just smashed it. And so I was, I, I was, I was, I was, cause, cause again, like I was touched that this guy got me these books and then Lack turns around and smashes a bug with him. Uh, and so I had like, I had to like go up and scrub bug guts off of the back. It was seriously, it was like, it was, it would look like you ever like dissect. Uh, like a frog or something, or a fish, you know, you kind of separate all the pieces in biology class. It, it would look, it looked like that. Like I saw every bit of the cockroach spread across this entire thing right here. And I had to go through and like, like clean it. And I was, I was, I was upset. And she was like, I'm sorry, I had to kill the cockroach. What do you want me to do? I was like, let it live. Don't smash it with my books. Uh, so I got those I'm pretty happy about that. Um, then <laughs> she was moderating your room as presence. That's right. That's right. It was the panhammer. Uh, and the last thing I got, and this one is actually something that will benefit you guys. Uh, I got this. <gasps> oh, 
Yeah. What is that, Mike B? This is an Alesis 3630 compressor slash gate two channel, but both of them will sync together so I could go ahead and run stereo through if I wanted to. What it'll do is allow me to compress the entire stream and make it sound nice and fat and juicy. And it'll sound just, I mean, it already sounds fat and juicy because I have one already. I already have, this is my second one now. Uh, the other one is actually uh, uh, on my microphone right here. Uh, what is the difference between the two? Here, I'll show you. Let me see. Let me see. Uh, pull this out. I uh, see. That's, that's me without compression. There you go. It's, you hear the fan. My voice doesn't sound quite as awesome. Then you plug it in. And all of a sudden, it sounds so much better. So that's going to be happening to the entire stream courtesy of this guy here uh it's just gonna take me a, a minute to actually get it all uh plugged in because my wiring is like completely uh all over the place uh what if it sounds the same to me <sighs> so uh this came courtesy of uh josh actually josh bought this and then uh he couldn't get it to work uh i don't know what part of it confused him um he said he got something better uh which is like I also think that's kind of a lie, but whatever. Uh, but it's a win for me because he hooked me up and he said he's going to give me the bro discount. He's like, I was like, how much do you want to give to me for? He said, I don't know, whatever. And I was like, well, I don't, what the fuck? I don't know what whatever is. So, I was, so it's like a hundred bucks. Normally it's a hundred bucks. And I was like, okay, I'll give you like 50 bucks. I feel like that's a good bro discount. And uh, it's also something that, yeah, it's broken. Yeah, we'll plug it in first. We'll make sure it works first. <laughs> Josh is a good guy. He'll hook me up if, I, if it ends up uh, being broken. Um, are you listening on? Oh, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> um, Anyways, yeah, so that's that's all the stuff that I got from BlizzCon, which is a lot more than I normally get. Usually I just come home with the with the, the goodie bag, and then that's pretty much it. But no, I got some. You know what's funny? You guys laugh at the, at the hat thing. I always wear a hat. The only time I don't wear a hat is on stream. I'm serious. I always wear a hat. Uh, <laughs> like, hat and a sweater, hat and a jacket is like my normal attire like nine months out of the year uh it's just it's just it's just the way it is i don't know why i'm surprised actually that i still have my hair uh because isn't like when you wear a hat it's supposed to like just start pulling your hair out or something i don't know uh boy do you think it's so much for nine months but the uh, alerts turned off so i'll get you later um hat boy i am i am i do i do love my hats sf attire oh i guess it is huh standard standard attire for uh, san francisco um so I guess we start talking about the actual news, the actual stuff that happened at BlizzCon. Um, lots of, I mean, lots of good stuff happened at BlizzCon. I don't want you guys to think that like, oh, the entire BlizzCon was a sham. Oh, it was terrible. All this stuff, right? Lots of stuff happened at BlizzCon, but also a lot of stuff, ah, bad stuff, stuff that like just didn't make people happy happened there too. And so I feel like <sighs> we really have to like go through this whole thing and try to cover as many bullet points as we can. Oh, man, that is not as good as I remember. So we're going to start off with the paper thing. You guys hear about the paper thing? So during the opening ceremony, there is supposed to be a thing that happened with, um, with Mike Morheim, Mike Morheim leaving. Uh, and what happened was, uh, there was a bunch of seats in the middle, in the middle rows that, had a piece of paper on it. It was just a piece. It was just a piece of paper, which I don't have any around here somehow. Uh, but imagine a piece of paper, if you will. Uh, and then it has like a little cutout for your eyes uh, and it has instructions. They say, wait for the command and then hold the paper up to your face. Look through the holes. Right. And that's it. Wait for that. It's called a paper stunt. They called it. And so everybody waited for the command. Everybody else in the audience had glow sticks. We don't know. We still don't know what those are for. Mike Morheim comes up, he does his final intro, and then he says, I want to go ahead and hand things over to JL and Brack. I'm going to play that for you right here. Actually, I have the clip right here. We're going to watch this. World of Warcraft teams, but within the whole company. He cares deeply about This is where he's introducing JL and Brack. And our employees. For all of those reasons and more, I'm proud and excited to see him lead Blizzard into the future. I want to thank you all again for your tremendous support. And now, please welcome to the stage the president of Blizzard Entertainment, we'll play out. Jay Allen Brack. Those, those dongers, I hate those things. 
Those dunk, 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 the worst thing that could have ever introduced the BlizzCon. Worse than Diablo Immortal. <laughs> so, paper stunt time. Right about now, you're gonna see people walking through the crowd with a sign that says paper stunt. On the screens, it says, hold up your paper, break out your, your sticks, whatever, your glow sticks. And so they're standing here hugging for like a long time, and then this happens. Now, no, whoa, hold on, hold on. So this is what was supposed to happen. Nobody knows what this means. Nobody knows what this means. Uh, <laughs> they, 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 they do this. Uh, there's another section here that was supposed to do it as well, but notice that th this person just handed them the, uh, the, the paper that says, oh, hold up your, your paper to your face. Look at it, hold your paper to the face. And so they just stand here for the longest time. You can see the look on, on Jalen Brack's face. I feel like he knows things are not happening the way it's supposed to. It's a very long, I'm just gonna mute it so you guys can really get an idea of just how long this went on for. Uh, no idea what happened. Just, just weird. Um, and so I don't think, I don't, I, nobody really ever uh, figured out what it was. Okay, so it kind of says thank you. I mean, we don't know. We don't know. It was just, it was just weird. It was just, it was just weird. There were no big letters. If you go back and look, uh, if we go back and take a look, uh, this is the biggest mystery of BlizzCon, by the way. Uh, <laughs> if we go back and look at the actual paper itself, like, there's nothing written on it. It's just white. So we thought something was going to be projected on it. Oh, yeah, it was projected on it or whatever. But no, nothing happened. Um, it just, is it a QR code? Yeah, there it is. I mean, like, there's no, no, none of the letters, none of them have any letters on them. Like, it was just weird. It was just weird. So we'll, we'll just let that go. <laughs> There's an eye slit, but that was just so you could hold it up at the right, like, height. And then look at this guy, just, like, ignoring the rules. Look at this guy. Not even doing it right. Um, mimic empty chairs. Maybe it's inside joke all BlizzCon seats are empty. Uh, maybe. Oh, yeah, paper gate. Yes, that yeah, paper gate. Oh, my God. Uh, I'm still waiting to crack the glow stick. Yeah, it, w it was just, it seemed like it was something that kind of came together at the last minute, and then they just weren't sure what to do. Now, there's a th this is actually more just amusing, right? Because it was like, you try, you want to send off Mike Morheim in the in the best with the best high five possible, uh, and it just got really awkward. <laughs> it just got really weird. Uh, so they do this, no idea what's happened after this, and then uh, and then we get into the regular ceremony after he um, he he, he uh, goes off the stage. So so let's let's start let's start with um, man, what should we start with? Let's start with. Let's start with, uh, uh, no, we're not going to start with, with Diablo. That's a long one. We'll get, we'll get to that in a minute. Uh, let's start with, uh, Warcraft 3 Reforged. That's a big deal to a, to a lot of us. A lot of us, that was like, you know, that was basically your first, uh, uh, that was, that was your first RTS. For me, my first RTS, whoa, okay, sorry, Jesus. Uh, my first RTS was, um, was actually Warcraft, uh, one and then Warcraft two, Very, pretty much like one right after the other. Cause I can't, I got, I got Warcraft one a little bit late. Um, and so for them to announce Warcraft three remastered is great because I never played through all of Warcraft three. Uh, as a matter of fact, we streamed Warcraft three on this channel just like, uh, three weeks ago or so. And, and it was just like, it was a little awkward to play because we couldn't get like online to work. We couldn't do any of that stuff to work. And so let me go ahead and play for you guys. Now the, uh, we'll play just a chunk of the, of the actual announcement trailer here so you kind of get an idea of uh, what it looks like it, it looks good it's what you should know like this is all in-game models now it's just a massive update it's just a massive update that they've done uh, to this. And what I'll do is actually I'll go have this just loop in the background here while we talk a little bit about the game itself because I did have an opportunity to play it. So, as you can see, update, the updates are... Here's the funny thing. I, I went in, I went into this and I was like... I, I watched the cinematic, I was like, yeah, it looks about how I remember. Because when's the last time you really paid attention to like, you know, when you think about an old game, you kind of fill in the gaps, right? And so when you when you when you actually see it updated, it's like, oh yeah, it looks like how I remember, which is I think what they wanted to do. They wanted to make it look like Warcraft 3 without necessarily but with with updated models and everything. And with having these updated models, it allows them to get better cutscenes. Uh, you know, the camera work, you get really close and see a ton of detail and everything. Uh, it just really, really opens the door on what they're able to do with it. I mean, look at this, look at this. 
Like you can't do this in in, in Warcraft three, the original. You just can't. Um, looks nothing like I remember. I know for me, I was just like, oh yeah, it kind of looks like this. It looks like I remember because in my head, I'm like filling in the blanks. It was like three polygons for a ghoul, and I'm just like, yeah, it looks totally like these guys. Um, so I did have an opportunity to play it. It does play a lot like Warcraft three, the original. This this is a huge shocker for some of you guys, I'm sure. Uh, it does play a lot like the original Warcraft three. Um, which, I mean, for better, for worse, right? I mean, it's it's an old style RTS, so not everybody's really gonna be that into it, right? Uh, but if you're in, if you're into it for the uh, to kind of for the nostalgia purposes and replaying the campaign, then great. But if you're in it for the uh, for the old custom games, you are in for a treat because uh, as f as of the panel that they gave talking about Warcraft uh, Warcraft Three. Um, their goal is to make sure that as many of the original custom games are compatible with the new clients. Ex with the exception of the ones that exploited game mechanics that were that are fixed in Warcraft 3, uh, Reforged, uh, for the most part, it's going to be, yeah, OG Dota and with the new character models. This is huge. Like, this is... I mean, Dota came from Warcraft 3. There's so many custom games in Warcraft 3. And so all of these things are all going to come flooding back uh, when they uh, when, when they uh, update the client with the new one. Um, it is going to cost $29.99 for the, for the game base model, uh, base edition, and $39.99 for the Spoils of War, which comes with a meat wagon mount if you are playing... Um, uh, if you're playing World of Warcraft, that's something you might want to look into. I'll, I'll be getting that myself. Um, <clears throat> any cutscenes out yet? You, they, they showed a couple here. Uh, actually, some of these that you see here are actually part of some of the cutscenes from the game. Um, and uh, 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 we did get a chance to play. What we played was the uh, um, uh, the Calling of Strat. You don't play? Wow. Oh, man. I can't talk about Wow. Uh, they, did, they, they gave us an, a, a glimpse at, or actually a lot, a lot of us opportunity to play the Calling of Strat. And they actually changed the layout of the map a little bit to make it feel a bit more like the strat that we know in WoW. And actually, they're going to they're actually going to try and tie in a lot of Warcraft 3, like change things in Warcraft 3 to make it match with what we know through WoW. Uh, and that's like character voices. Um, because in this, in this, mo in this, uh, in this, uh, demo that we did, which nobody talked about, which makes you wonder if this might be potentially inside information or not, but it wasn't the original, uh, 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 Arthas voice. It was the new Arthas voice, I think, right? Or is it Rin? I can't remember. But some of the voices were re-recorded for this demo that we played. Um, and so some of the feedback on the floor was like, oh yeah, it's, it sounds a little bit different or whatever. Uh, but they're going to try to tie it in so that way it feels a bit more like you're playing extension um, uh, an extension of, uh, uh, of World of Warcraft, or vice versa, however you want to, like, word that. Um, Christy Golden, who's the author of, uh, some of the Warcraft lore books, she's gonna make some storyline tweaks to fit with the current WoW lore, so you can look forward to some storyline tweaks. It sounds like they're gonna be making changes to emphasize certain characters that we saw, that we see in WoW that were in Warcraft 3, but maybe didn't necessarily have that much of a presence. So they're going to try to give them more of a presence so that way you could be like, oh, here's this person that I saw, that I play, you know, that, that I see in World of Warcraft. And then, uh, and now it's like, oh, cool. Now I can see that more of that person there. And they're not just kind of like a, a person in the background too. Um, so it's not going to be a pure, a pure one-to-one -one copy. They're making changes to try to make it better. Because you got to think, gameplay styles have changed. They have more money now to spend on it, and you know when you go back and uh, and 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 take another look at your product with all the feedback you've gathered over the past twenty years, there's room for improvement. There's there there is there is there is room for improvement. Uh, great if you're a WoW fan. Wonder about War Three fans. I I don't I don't feel like personally. Uh, I don't feel like there's enough of a hardcore War Three that are not WoW uh, fan base to really make that big of an have that big of an influence on what uh on these changes if that makes sense um and and blizzard shouldn't cater to to that which we'll talk about that catering to an audience uh more later uh but yeah it's it's uh too bad it's not a warcraft 2 remake i know i personally would have enjoyed a warcraft 2 remake maybe somebody could remake warcraft 2 in warcraft 3 that will make me happy uh i would be very happy with that actually um uh, so there's a crossplay of the original so so 
there is not, not going to be cross play with, there's not gonna be cross play between the new client and the old client. Uh, and I'm, I'm not saying that was confirmed cause it's not, I'm just telling you that because they said that they're redoing the net code to support battle net, uh, uh, instead of having to do all the port forwarding stuff that you have, uh, you have to do if you want to play Warcraft three, uh, multiplayer, like if you want to host and have invite people to your server and all that stuff. Remember we tried to do this on stream and we couldn't get it to work because we had to port forward a bunch of stuff. And so we were just like, fuck it, just whatever. Uh, but they're going to make it so that way it uses, utilizes Battle.net the same way that StarCraft II does, and then they'll be able to, uh, you'll be able to play multiplayer games with ease, without having to worry about port forwarding and all that crazy stuff. <laughs> you just get in this play. And so with that, I'm going to go ahead and make the assumption that it will not be cross-platform, or cro I guess cross-client compatible with uh, multi in multiplayer games with people that are playing on the original client. Are they going to release the old game for free like they did with starcraft one no no so this costs 29.99 this is a lot of work that went into this though trust me i just bought warcraft 3 again uh like three weeks ago so i'm not like thrilled that i had to buy it again but i will we have until next year though so you have plenty of time to save up you'll be fine 29.99 for the base model 39.99 for spoils of war which comes with the meat wagon uh, and other stuff. So no, it's not fifty bucks. It's thirty bucks and forty bucks. Uh, I have three. I have a, I have a CD copy. I have a CD copy, or maybe a floppy. No, yeah, CD copy. And I have uh, now a, a BattleNets copy. My CD copy wasn't compatible with anything. Plus, I don't have an optical drive. Who has an optical drive? I'm sure somebody does. They're not that old, but they're old enough. Um, that's like nine copies. Ah, math jokes. Uh, <laughs> next. Next, let's talk about uh, WoW Classic. This is a big deal, I think. I think it's a big deal. WoW Classic. So, uh, obviously, I think a lot of you guys have opportunity to either like, play it or watch it. Uh, watch it being played um, in... Uh, on, what's it called? Uh, on stream, right here, right here on Twitch. Uh, I'm going to pull up a, a video here, just so you guys can just kind of... We have something going in the background here. This is basically IGN playing... Um, uh, playing on a mage on the classic server here, so you're gonna get an opportunity. Again, you could probably see this footage anywhere on Twitch right now. Uh, <clears throat> so I did have an opportunity to play WoW Classic. We do not have a release date. We know that's gonna be coming uh, uh, summer of 2019, so summer of next year. I want to note that when it when it was first when it was first leaked, I said I said it's gonna be late 2019 or 2020, no sooner, and I was right. Of course, I don't have like a clip of that anywhere, but that's fine. Just trust me. Trust me, I'm right. Uh, so I did get an opportunity to play this uh, while I was on the floor. And um, all I did was I basically, I rolled a mage and like, like, like they did. Uh, oh, by the way, I don't know if you saw. <laughs> did anybody catch this? Did anybody catch this? Nobody's saying anything. I'm gonna roll it back. Tell me what's wrong with this. Let's go back to... About here. All right, I'll let this play. Tell me if you see, tell me if you see something wrong here. Uh, I did get to play as player mage, and I basically spent a lot of time just, uh, I spent a lot of my demo time simply um, uh, dueling. <laughs> I, I spent the entire time just dueling. Uh, yes, thank you. Thank you, Bizzler. Buying water as a mage. <laughs> now, now we could say, we could say, oh, IGN. <laughs> Fucking IGN. We could say that, but there's a lot of stuff that you tend to forget. That's not, that shouldn't be one of them. That shouldn't be one of them. But uh, there's a lot of stuff that you sometimes tend to forget when you're, uh, uh, because you haven't played classic in so long. Like I had to sit here and like read these talents. I had a mage. Uh, I played the shit on my mage. It was a low level mage, but still, uh, I don't remember any of these talents. I was like, oh, that's right. I could knock down my, my frost, frost bolt to, to uh, my rank one frost bolt to like one second or something or 0.8 seconds or whatever it was. Uh, and so I did that. Uh, which is, and then I basically, <laughs> did you guys see the, hold on, did you guys see this tweet? Uh, this guy, uh, so I, I basically did a ton of, uh, of duels, and then I get this guy that just totally took me right back, just took me right back to, to the good old days of, uh, of World of Warcraft. It says, uh, you have requested a duel, three, two, one, yeah, has defeated uh, aesthetic in a duel. You bow for aesthetics, pussy. This is this is like this is classic. It's classic. So playing it, it was it was pretty much indistinguishable from 
from classic uh, outside of like some graphical things, right? Like obviously the uh, there's not like a circle underneath the character uh, and the uh, density of the grass is a little bit more. Um, you could always use it in the back of the day. You could use a macro to increase the density of certain things. Uh, if you wanted to, not everybody knew about that. I knew about that because I made a lot of machinima back then. Oh, well, not in the classic days, but just in the earlier, uh, wild days. Uh, and so that's basically how I played. It looked like this. Um, it is, it is the way that they did it. They did it. They did a, um, they had a panel where they kind of discussed how they made this happen. And you, some people think, oh, well, there's vanilla service already up. Why don't you just go ahead and use their stuff? It's because their stuff was just doctoring the client to make it work. Blizzard needs to make it uh, work on current architecture so they could take advantage or infrastructure so they can take advantage of some of the uh, some of the things that they've implemented since then on the back end. Like, for example, I guess social uh, integration, like in, in the client in the actual uh, client here, um, you can actually tweet from it, which obviously you couldn't do back. Twitter didn't even exist when WoW came out. Uh, your Battle.net friends, like all that stuff, is there, all that stuff needed the infrastructure that was already built, um, uh, or was built, I guess, after the fact. It's so weird. Yeah, it was built after Classic. They needed to put it into Classic. Uh, and so what they did was they ended up putting a lot of old stuff on top of new stuff. And it's really interesting to see how the examples of when things would go wrong, because they would basically like... They would move reference for items. References for items would basically be like non-existent. And so, like they showed us uh, um, uh, Lock Madan, I think, and uh, in Lock Madan, you know, the, the 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 lake there, there was a dam, and after the cataclysm happened, the dam was broken. And so, what happened was the the water was there uh, once they did once they did like the old assets on top of the old, the new architecture. Like the water was there. But the dam was missing and the water was still being held up. And it was just like all kinds. And then like inside of there was like people with like campfires, like inside the bottom of the lake. Like there's all kinds of like weird stuff that happened because because it's looking at old locations for data. Uh, and so they do a good job of kind of breaking that down, explain to everybody exactly how, um, you know, how they had to go through and do all of this, uh, all of this stuff. Uh, how long until they have put out classic Burning Crusade? So, yeah, we'll talk about that, too. They did talk about that. Um, let's see. Uh, Ian. Ian discussed, uh, Ian Hazakosis, he got up and he talked a little bit about uh, things that they should and shouldn't change. He said they sat down and they went through, but they had like a list of 100 different items they could, they could go through and say, okay, what about this? Do we change this? No, we keep it. You know, try, trying to make a case to keep things. For the most part, the majority of stuff that they uh, they went through, they ended up keeping. But there's a couple of things, and I wanted to show you some of them. So one of them is like mail. So mail... Um, used to take an hour, right? You you mail something to somebody, and the example he gave was, let's say you need to mail something to somebody, and they're in Booty Bay, uh, and you're in, like, Stormwind or something. Okay, if you mail them something, it takes an hour to get there. So what do you do? You turn around, and uh, you either you wait an hour, and you find something else to do, or you get out, and you go there, and you give them the mats personally, uh, or, or whatever, and they create the item for you, the craft the item for you, and then that's it. Then you're done in less than an hour. But it got you out into the world. They got you out into the world, and that was, uh, this is not my gameplay, FYI. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. Uh, but yeah, it, get, it, it, it gets people out into the world. So they decided, we're going to keep one hour mail. So you see, every single piece they went through, just like that. UI mods. Somebody somewhere was like, oh, I heard they're, they're removing UI mods in Classic. That is a fucking, like, weird interpretation of what he said. It had nothing to do with that. Uh, he said that there are certain mods that uh that break uh or automate certain things that were not intended and so those things will be um uh, will be nerfed essentially uh so like you can have like a one button macro that basically goes through your entire rotation and so that's something that they don't want and so they're going to go ahead and uh and nerf that but for the most part the majority of the stuff that we've come to enjoy uh, is going to be, uh, uh, all that stuff is going to be uh, available in with with mods. Uh, group loot, that's important. So back in the day, whenever you uh, ninja loot something, or if you're a mass looted something on accident, it was yours. It could be the most coveted item that a warrior could possibly want, and then a hunter walks away with it, uh, whether it be on purpose or on accident. And so they decided, we're going to keep the two-hour trade, the two-hour trade window, uh, uh, we're going to keep that into, uh, move that into classic. And so that's something that I think is a pretty big deal because the way that you structured it was, look, every time this happened, 
somebody would put in a support ticket and we'd end up fixing it. Unless they're ninja, right? Uh, and it, it, it ate up valuable uh, uh, human resources, right? Uh, and also your own time. It would take several days to get uh, to get your item back. And it's like, well, what if what if the reset happened? And you don't have your crazy new shoulders or whatever it is that you wanted to take on this uh, uh, take on this raid or this dungeon or whatever. Well, you have to wait until you get it back. And so, and why would a hunter return gear? I know. Why would they just? <laughs> plate why not uh <laughs> so so they're gonna put in the the uh um the window the two-hour window so that way people could trade things back that's awesome i think that's good those are like that's like a good change um a uh, rogue energy this is something i totally forgot about I, as, as somebody who again who played ro played a rogue in classic uh i totally forgot about back in the day because of server limitations they gave you back, you got energy, energy regen happened in chunks of 20. And so what will happen is every uh, like two seconds or one second, whatever it was, uh, you'd get a 20 energy chunk, 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 right? Um, now it's like one, one, one for every one tenth of a second or something. So it's like zzz, kind of like that. Now it's like nice and smooth. So what they've done is kept it as the original one chunk of 20 energy per tick or whatever uh because that had an impact on how we played i remember when that change happened and i felt like i, I felt like my uh my 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 rogue rotation was smoother but the timing of things were weird because i was used to do this do this wait a second do that wait a second do this do that wait a second combo finish right combo whatever like that's how it felt and so those kinds of things they said they're going to keep in because that was part of the original thing. So I feel like, you know, those of you guys who are worried that uh, uh, that they're going to like mess up classic by putting all of this live stuff in it. I don't think that's going to be a thing. I really don't think it's going to be a thing. Um, Hunter Dead Zone is going to be back. Oh, yeah. But I mean, let's be real. Hunter's Hunter's got a lot of uh, a lot of outs for that. So if if, uh, if you can't handle a dead zone as a hunter. <sighs> And if you don't remember your arrows, then you've got something else wrong. Um, let's see. Uh, sharding. That was a big thing. Phasing and all that stuff. Sharding will take place at launch, uh, but only when only when needed. So that's going to be something that's going to be a little bit awkward, I guess. Right. You're going to have. So back in the day, you know, you always had like one server with with your name and you were the best person on that server. But they're going to have in certain instances, they're going to kick on sharding at the beginning because they know they're going to have an influx of people. that are going to come in a massive influx of people, but all, not all of those people are going to stick around. So instead of making it so that they're going to have 20 servers, they're just going to have like one server that just kind of like shh, kind of blows up and supports all the people. But they're still on the same server. They just use like sharding in order to kind of move people around until the population settles and then everybody will be uh, on the same, you know, whatever. Um, so that's good news. Staggered content releases. So if you haven't seen this, let me actually get the uh, graphic up for this. We'll just leave that up for the duration of this, this piece here. Um, so this is a pretty big deal. This is how they're going to release content. So what, this is the current thinking. They have to put that in, right? Current thinking, stage one, stage two. They're going to actually release content. Uh, they're going to time it. So it's, it's basically a progression server, just like you would have in, in, in EverQuest, actually. Uh, so uh, Multicore, Nixia, Dire Maul, Kazakh, uh, Azure goes, all these things are going to be done in one block. And then did they talk about the DR. They did not talk about the DR at all, actually. Not that I saw. They didn't. So you should know uh, the WoW Classic panel was not a Q&A panel. It was just a presentation. And that was it. Uh, so we didn't have an opportunity to really ask any questions, unfortunately. Um, Blackwing, I mean, all these things are going to be staged and going to basically release slowly, which is, I think that's awesome. So that way people don't, you know, just rush all the content. Or, or really, I mean, if, if, Nax, if Nax's Scourge is out, well, first off, if Nax is out, you're not going to just jump right in there. But you're probably going to skip a couple of these stages to go to it. Um, you know, just get geared up and then go to it. And so a lot of content will end up being dead on arrival. And so what they're going to do is they're going to release things in stages. Uh, no idea how long it's going to take. They haven't, they haven't, they haven't actually worked out how long it's going to take for those things. Um, they did say, obviously the on Oh, the, the gates of on the opening of the gates of on will happen. 
That is actually something that I find to be, and I wish they had a Q&A for this because I'm sure somebody would have asked. Um, we already know what we need to open up the gates of AQ. We already know. The linen, right? The room cloth, like millions of this stuff. We already know what we need. Nothing is going to stop us from getting into uh, vanilla and just start hoarding this stuff on like multiple characters or whatever else, right? You have all these mule characters or banks or whatever uh, to start stockpiling this stuff. So when the event happens, they're going to have to figure out a way to either gate it or change what it is that you need and not tell us ahead of time. So I'm really curious to see what they do because it would, it would be ruined. It's like, oh yeah, race to, race to open the gates. And it's just like, oh, well, we already got the resources done. We just have to wait for them to finish the quest line and that's it, we're done. Like, it's just, I hope, I really hope, <laughs> Vermino, I hope that they change the, the items necessary for it. One million bear paws. It'll be like, uh, what is that? What is that stuff you need for Westfall stew? Like bear liver, boar liver or something? Yeah, stuff like that. Oh man. The quest line takes two or three weeks due to items for raid. Yeah, exactly. So, but that's a thing. It's like, there's still the whole point of the, of the gates of, of the whole opening of the gates was that everybody got involved because even if you weren't doing the raids, the quest lines, all that, you can still contribute by farming materials. <laughs> Gore tusk livers, 200,000. Uh, you could still contribute. And so that was the point. If, if you have a handful of people that basically knock out all of the, the resources necessary for the gathering part uh, immediately, then that part is just basically dead. Uh, and hopefully they, they change that somehow. Um, even if it does have to be zebra hooves or uh, tails from some random wailing caverns mob <laughs> like even if it has to be that but what's cool is that there's going to be uh new scarab lords which is kind of interesting because you obviously can't get that anymore like if you guys scarab lord is the person that opens the gate basically you only have one per server uh and i'm, I'm pretty sure that hasn't changed um because the person who actually opens the gate is the one that gets the oh is that wrong is that wrong? I was, I was, that's what I was under the impression, is that you get one, you get one uh, scepter, it's been a while, it's been a while, wow. um, you get one scepter and that person opens the gate and they get uh, the Scarab Lord title. Um, Coma Canadian says incorrect, so correct me, what is it supposed to be? One person from each faction, oh, okay, well, fuck, uh, sorry. <laughs> You have a 10 hour window to ring the gong. Oh, a 10 hour window. Okay, got it. Got it. Okay, cool. So there you go. There you go. So two. So I, it's obvious that uh, there's even disagreement in chat itself. So I guess we'll find out another time what the actual answer is. As long as uh, other people have done the quest line and rings the gong within a couple of hours. There you go. Okay, so it sounds like that's probably the case is that as long as you have a bunch of people lined up ringing the gong one after another, then that'll be a thing. I'm looking forward to all this stuff. I mean, I think I think it's all gonna be awesome. I didn't raid. I I didn't start raiding until I was getting carried through Nax. Uh, and even then, I didn't finish because <laughs> we were going for like the enchants and shit. Um, but yeah, like this is an opportunity for me. I mean, I play I played vanilla, but I didn't raid. Like, I'm not, I'm not gonna raid, mind you. I don't think so. Uh, but just to experience some of this content and everything, I think it's gonna be um fucking awesome. I really do think it's gonna be awesome. Uh, I mean, after this weekend, like I'm sold on it. I'm so I was sold on it before. I don't know about you guys, uh, but I, I was sold on it before. And, uh, I don't know if that means like, I'm going to actually play it hardcore. I might actually get in and play it for like a month and a half and be like, yeah, wow, this is super vanilla. <laughs> I'm going to just come back to it later. Uh, I don't know. But as of right now, I know I'm definitely going to dedicate at least a day to this, at least, at least one day. You're totally going to raid? Oh, man. <sighs> After the panel, they made it clear this isn't a throwaway. Exactly. Yeah, they made it very clear. They're really working on this. Um, they really are working on this. This is why, this is why they had to outsource Diablo to a, a Chinese uh, mobile game company. <laughs> it was because they're working on this. That's what it was. Um, high res Leroy Jenkins. That's right. All of that stuff. We could relive all of this stuff. 
You can have multiple per server. There's a short window that anyway. Said, okay, so that's what it is. Scepter, they have multiple people within a short level, a uh, short uh, amount of time. Cool. Now we're clear on that. Um, and they will probably continue content. Yeah. Yeah. I, I actually had this like stupid, like, <laughs> we were like drinking. I was just like, I was like, oh man, wouldn't it be cool? Wouldn't it be cool? Just like, wouldn't it be cool? Listen, guys, listen. What if they went like the Star Trek alternate timeline route where like they, they, they get, they give us like, you know, the initial content and then like they change something. And so now it's like all of a sudden it's like, holy crap. The next expansion isn't the burning crusade. It's like this whole new thing because nobody really, I mean, seriously, guys, seriously, be honest. Do you really want to play the burning crusade again? I understand playing vanilla, but do you really want to play the burning crusade again? Do you really want to do that? Like, I don't, I'm not, I'm not excited about burning crusade. You do? I see a no. I see a hell no. I see a no. I see, I see yeses. I see yeses. <laughs> so, so here's my prediction. Here's my official prediction. I'm going to make this official because if I'm wrong, I lose nothing. Right. My official prediction is that after they, uh, assuming that it's successful after they get through the stage four of content here, uh, we're going to see a, a divergent timeline for world of Warcraft and we're going to get something new. But we'll see. We'll see. That's just, that's just what I think. That's what I think they might do. I don't know. We'll see. They can always use, see, here's the, here's the beauty, the beauty of this is the tuning and the balance. They, they eventually got it pretty close to right in every expansion. So part of the most difficult part of, um, of creating every expansion is not just the content, but also like the balance and how things progress and all this stuff. They already have that stuff in place. They just got to create new content, which I know I'm not trying to play it down. Like that's some simple, simple task, but that's all they have to do. <laughs> and they go through timelines, all this stuff, but the actual mechanics to make it fun to play will still be there because they can just take that stuff from, uh, uh, from the burning crusade. So nuke every server, uh, nuke the server every two years. They have to do something. I mean, at some point, people are going to be playing and be like, wow, you know, there's like a ton of people playing. And we're out of content. Finally, after two years, because I don't know how long it's going to take for them to get through stage four. Um, and the, Blizzard's going to have to do something. I think they're going to make a divergent timeline. Yeah. It could take away from new X-Pac ideas. I suppose it could, but no one really cares about that. <laughs> no one cares about that. Uh, so that is, that is it for WoW Classic. Um, I guess we'll have to just like wait until we get more information. We pretty much covered everything there. It's called season, a new classic season. There we go. There we go. Uh, there was, there was some, uh, let's talk about like, wow, uh, battle for Azeroth. Not a whole lot of new stuff, not a whole lot of new stuff. So we're not going to spend a lot of time on it. I was in line for classic, uh, and Warcraft three while watching the panel up on the big screen, which is super convenient. I don't feel like they had that last year. Um, and, uh, most of this stuff is known because the PTR has been out. There's a couple things that are coming up that are that are interesting, and the only two things I'll mention uh, on this is that Arathi Basin and uh, Warsung Gulch are going to get uh, a makeover. They're going to update it. Um, as far as I know, the biggest thing I want to ask them, if I ever get a chance to, uh, is or, or one th one thing I want to find out is will the um, the actual hitboxes of things change? Because that part is pretty important to me. Because as as somebody who's played probably thousands of Warsong Gulches at various levels where I didn't have mounts. Um, you get used to like, you get used to things like jumping the fence and everything. Like, you know where to jump the fence. You know how to walk the fence. You know how to climb things. You know how to do all this stuff. Uh, not necessarily like wall climbing and whatnot, but still like I need, I, I kind of want to know if it's just a graphical update or if it's something else, just out of curiosity, mostly. Um, so anyways, yeah, there's a lot of this other stuff that were mentioned, but unfortunately I didn't get a, get a chance to watch that. Um, I didn't get all the information, but if you're already playing BFA, you probably know most of that information. Hearthstone. Hearthstone is getting a new ex expansion. It takes place in Stranglethorn Vale. Uh, more specific, most specifically, it actually takes place around the, um, Gurubashi Arena. Uh, another place I basically lived for a long time. Uh, oh, Arena Grandmaster Trinket. <laughs> there are other things like wall climbing is gone. Oh, that's, I mean, the wall climbing is fine. I, like I said, none of the stuff I'm talking about is wall climbing uh, at all. It's, uh, uh, it was mostly like just being able to jump over fences and all that stuff. Not wall climbing. Um, so yeah, Hearthstone. More, yeah, more cards to spend money on. Yeah, exactly. I, I don't know. I, I, 
as far as I know, there's not a lot of you guys that play Hearthstone, and if you do, you don't really talk about it very much. But in within the community here and in Discord, I rarely ever hear Hearthstone brought up. So I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on that. But it's a new expansion, new cards. Uh, it's more complexity <laughs> on top of what's already there, uh, and that's it. So if you're looking forward to that, you're looking forward to that. Good. Uh, Overwatch. Overwatch. This is something I think some of you guys are interested in. I, I'm interested in it, actually. I thought this new character was fucking awesome. Uh, so Overwatch has a new... Um, they have a new character that they've introduced. The character's name is Ash. Uh, and uh, the Diablo announcement we're going to get to last. Get to last. So this is the cinematic. As always, Blizzard... Blizzard does an amazing job with uh, with their cinematics. Like, just a really good job. You know, it's funny, I was watching this, and I was like, this is the most Team Fortress 2-looking cinematic that I've seen so far from them. Um, this right here, this young lady here, Ash, she's the new character. While you guys are watching this, I'll go over her, uh, uh, her abilities and whatnot. So, she has, uh, she has a rifle. Uh, and she can fire from the hip, or she can fire it uh, ADSing, and she'll get a bonus to damage by ADSing. Uh, she gets, she has dynamite, dynamite, which applies a dot. I'm gonna talk over this. You guys can watch this later. Just, just watch it for the, the for the graphics. Um, so she has dynamite she could throw, and the dynamite will uh, not only do burst damage, but it'll also put a dot on the character, the the target character, or anyone in the vicinity. So that's kind of nice. You set them on fire for a minute. Um, also, uh, she has a coach gun, which is essentially rocket jumping. It's a knockback. It's a knockback. So like somebody's coming up, you psh, knock them back. Uh, and also a, uh, and you'll see it during certain parts, some parts of the uh, the cinematic here. Uh, I'm gonna fast forward a little bit, to get some of the action. So you kind of see some of it. Uh, you can't really see any of the stuff here, uh, not really. Uh, good fashion, anyways. Um, and she can also use it to jump herself to launch herself back. The uh, uh, the last of for of force of nature jump. Oh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> the last thing that they added is Bob. So they did this presentation, right? They did this, they did this video and everyone was just like, he was like, okay, so there's a bunch of characters here. There's, uh, there's this new character, Echo, that they kind of, uh, uh, they kind of show here right about here. Uh, or right about here. This character here, Echo, come on, come on. Uh, this is a new character that they are not ready to uh, talk about yet. Uh, yes, your robo waifu. <laughs> uh, they were like, what are we gonna, is it gonna, is it gonna be Ash? Is it gonna be, uh, you know, Bob? Is it gonna be Echo? Whatever. Um, and then they were like, oh, it's gonna be Ash. And a lot of people were upset because everybody wanted Bob. Everyone wanted Bob. Uh, so good news is, is that Bob is gonna be, uh, in the game with her as her. Let me see if I can find some, um, I find some gameplay here of, I didn't think about getting gameplay. Uh, of here, see Ash, Bob, gameplay. I know Blizzard has one. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo, origin story. Nope. All right. Well, can't find it. So uh, Bob is actually her alt. So battery operated boyfriend. Yes. <laughs> whenever she, uh, whenever she alts, Bob shows up and just basically starts wrecking shit. That's it. Kind of like Tor 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 Torbjorn and his uh, and his uh, alt. Um, she can die and he'll still be around to do some work uh, and everybody i think was pretty pleased with that it's obviously going to make some pretty interesting cosplays uh i mean the cosplays just with ash already are going to be awesome uh bob as a companion will be interesting because he's a big big ass robot uh i don't know if there's any rule 34 stuff out yet actually i'm pretty sure that stuff will be uh if it's not already out i'm pretty sure it will be coming uh soon I'm with you. Uh, <laughs> so that was, that's the, uh, yes, there is. Oh, man. I'm sure there's drawings, but come on. You got to wait for the actual, like, you know, the actual machinima stuff. That's the best stuff. Uh, let's see. Let's talk about, um, before we get into, uh, before we get into the good stuff, uh, did any of you guys watch the, the WoW Arena Championships? It took 47 minutes. It was just a picture. It was just a picture. Come on. Pictures don't count. I could draw a picture. I'll do it right now. Man, I can't do it. I'll get in trouble. Is that guy still in here? Is that is that staff still in here? Just kidding, staff guy. I won't do that. Um, so the uh <laughs> oh, you found a vid? Oh, okay. Well, 
shit. All right. Um, wow, Arena. Nobody cares. I I didn't get a chance to see it, but I care because I didn't see it this year. But I used to watch it all uh, every other BlizzCon because it's always next to StarCraft, and it kind of sucks, but it always is. Um, uh, Sidu is is a guy who's been playing. He's a wrestler shaman. He's been playing for uh, six years, I think, across various teams. For the most part, uh, they've been uh, uh, method. I think. I think at the beginning it was not method. Um, anyways, this guy has been like. Like been competing at BlizzCon like every every year, and he finally wins. So congratulations to him. Um, it's the first NA team. Method Method Orange is the first NA team to win uh, in five years. So that's a pretty big deal. Um, the next thing is, and this is more. I mean, I know there's probably not a lot of you guys into this. I don't care because I thought it was awesome. But uh, this was Serral versus Stats. Sarah versus, Sarah, Sarah versus Stas. Sarah's from Finland. Um, he is uh, he is a god. <laughs> like he is just an absolute machine. More so than I mean, you watch any professional player go, like from their perspective, it's amazing to see what they could do. But apparently Sarah's like one step above that. Um, he only lost one match getting up to the finals. Uh, and then he takes on stats and he wins the first two matches. Uh, yeah, the first two matches stats takes one and a two, and then he ends up getting another one, uh, another two, I think. So I think the finals was like four two, I think was the final, um, man, it was just good. You saw a game through ZVZ. Yeah. ZVZ was, uh, that was rogue. Uh, that was, he's playing rogue. Uh, he, he really is like there, there's, I love I love watching StarCraft stuff because of the complexity of what they could do. It just feels like like it's just inhuman and and the stuff that they could do. So here's what he's doing here. This is stats stuff right here. Uh, this is all he's got left. He's basically did. He, Cyril is like super, super like just he likes to just chip away at you, right? He'll take out like your key things. Like so, for example, uh, stats can't get gas anymore, right? Because Cyril's already while he's doing all of this harassment of the main. Uh, a fleet that stats has uh he's also microwing a bunch of dudes around to harass and destroy workers basically uh suffocating uh, uh stats of, of uh, any kind of resources uh and again all at the same time while running in and like snatching out somebody and destroying and just just beautiful flawless gameplay um anyways so Cyril is the first the first non-korean winner in 20 years Starcraft is and always has been a Korean dominated game. Korean dominated game. Uh so for somebody else to take the whole thing is just yeah, he three he three owed a lot of it. He didn't lose until the semifinals. He lost one match in the semifinals. So total he only lost what three matches in the entire tournament? That's fucking crazy. Um yes, Starcraft is 20 years old. So there <laughs> just a reminder. <laughs> Starcraft is 20 years old. Uh so yeah, it was just it was uh it was awesome to watch. Let me see if I uh uh his his reaction is actually pretty great too. Let me get this clip out here. Uh Sarah's 20 years old. Yeah, he's uh they had this video package that well he got into it because his brother started playing. His brother ended up going to school. His brother always beat him, right? Uh and so because he would never let him win. You know, he's never like, oh you're my brother, I'll let you win, right? Never let him win. Um, and so Cyril got really good, I guess, because his brother always kicked his ass. And so his brother was like, yeah, you know, I'm a little jealous because I feel like that could have been me, but I went to school and that was pretty much it. Uh, but obviously supportive of his brother, uh, uh playing and being successful, uh, in, uh, in Starcraft. He basically just wins everything. He just fucking, he has a huge thing of trope here. So here's the, uh, the final interview here. You clean sweep four back-to-back -back WCS titles. Next up was GSL vs. The World, and today, not only are you a WCS Global Champion, you are the best player in the world! <laughs> I don't know, I don't know what to say. Yeah, I mean, when I came here, I wasn't really expecting to win, but at the same time, it was my goal, so... Yeah, feels incredible. This next one's great. This goes beyond you becoming the best of the best. Your legacy 
goes beyond StarCraft II, it goes to all of StarCraft history. In the last 20 years, we have never seen a non-Korean dominate in the fashion that you have and become the best of the best like you have. What does it mean for you to be part of this historic moment? Yeah, I mean, I wasn't expecting, <laughs> and now, I, I mean, it's just, this is kind of what I was missing from my trophy collection, I guess you could say, and I really wanted to win this one, so I'm super happy I managed to do it, and I'm super happy to make history at, uh, while doing it as well. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. Like, I... I was kind. I was kind of just missing this trophy from my case. Like, <laughs> so yeah, so good. And like, of course, like Twitch chat was like just blowing up over this because they streamed this part, I guess. Uh, but um, she says she was crying backstage. Everyone, who was crying? I I was almost in tears. I'm dude. This the last match. I mean, seriously. If you if you guys even if you're not into StarCraft, you maybe don't follow it very well. The uh, cast it's Tastosis, right? It's Tasteless and uh, Artosis. Uh, they do a really good job of of not just casting it, but also um, uh, but also explaining at times what certain things does uh, do, right? Uh, so even if you don't fully understand StarCraft II, I think everybody that watches this, watching right now, has a rough idea of how StarCraft II functions. Uh, so you can probably, what I would suggest is go back and watch just the last match. It was the most intense, the intense, yeah, it's finished, he's finished, uh, out of all. Um, it was so intense. I seriously thought I seriously thought I was gonna have a heart attack. I was like, I, my heart was racing, and like uh, we, I was there with Lack, uh, uh, David, Nitsit, uh, uh, Spencer, uh, and Lack's kid. Lack of Spencer's kid, Sam. Sam, by the way, this is adorable, right? Uh, so Sam's ten years old. This is his first convention, right? First convention, first, uh, uh, first anything like this. Big Overwatch fan. Um, let's see if I can find the. Uh, um, the, the tweet here uh he he had a sign he made a sign at the beginning of the competition where he was like where it said uh sterile too good or whatever and so uh this guy comes around and he's like uh he's like yeah let me let me take your uh, let me take your picture or whatever and as it turns out that guy was uh uh was, let me see if i can find the the picture here um it was the official starcraft uh starcraft esports channel so here's here's <laughs> here he is he's like you imagine being a 10 year old and this is like your first you're the first time you were like being exposed to the like and like the guy you're rooting for. You don't really know much about StarCraft, but the guy you chose to root for ends up winning the whole thing. Like he he is just completely over the he's apparently he's gonna start playing StarCraft now. And this is how this is how these heroes are born, right? They're inspired by somebody else the uh to get into the game and everything. He actually went up and he got that thing uh, uh autographed by Sarah, and it's so funny. Like you look at Cyril, look at Cyril, the way he talks, everything very simple, like just kind of like like not simple, like a, a very calm, not very emotive, and everything. His his actual um, let's see if I can get a zoom in of this here. His actual aut uh, autograph looks just like you would expect someone of his uh, uh, emotional <laughs> state or whatever. It's just it's it's almost like like a kid when you write the right between the lines and everything. It's S E. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, just, uh, and then I guess later they're talking about, see, like, he's like, oh yeah, StarCraft, huh? Okay, so listen, son, this is his dad, right? Spencer, he's all like, listen, son, so what you gotta do is, cause he's super into StarCraft, so, so yeah, man, you, one of these days, 20 years from now, or probably less, you're gonna get, uh, uh, you're gonna hear about Sam out there stopping kids, uh, yeah, and here's here's uh, another good shot. Thank you, Boots. There's another good shot of uh, of Sarah with his trophy. Um, but yeah, I was just like, I, I just thought this was such a great moment, and I love I love watching StarCraft events, especially at uh, or actually almost exclusively at uh, at uh, 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 BlizzCon because you're there, you're there with the hype and everything, and uh, everyone's fucking loud. And it's a party, and it's fucking awesome. It's so good. Um, God, what's left? What's left? <sighs> what are we forgetting? What are we forgetting? Hmm. Uh, oh, Hots. I didn't have that on the list. <laughs> Hots. Yes, Hots does have a new... You're right. I'm sorry. Hots does have a new character. Uh, a new hero they're introducing uh, and a couple skins. Uh, the hero's name is Orf Orphia. Orphia, I think. Um, I don't play a lot of Hots at all. So, I can't... Unfortunately, I can't necessarily tell you anything about her. 
Um, new, oh uh, yeah, Hot's anime waifu. Yes, so Hot's has a new waifu for 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 you guys. Uh, so get your get your pillows pre ordered now. Uh, last thing on the list, um, Diablo on Switch. No, uh, Diablo on Switch is play. It plays exactly how you'd expect. It just plays like. Like the, just like the console version, but the buttons are switched because the switch has different buttons, hence the name. Um, otherwise, though, uh, that plays fine. I'm actually looking forward to picking it up and playing it myself because I really enjoyed playing it on console before uh, uh, on on Xbox 360, and so I'll probably enjoy playing it again. Uh, when are you gonna do the StarCraft two playthrough? Already did that a long time ago, actually, and I believe I streamed it too. I believe I streamed it too. Yeah, I already played uh, StarCraft two, um, the campaign. All I ever played was the campaign. That's it. Um, and, uh, 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 I guess we're talking about Diablo Immortal. Uh, so this is a big one. This is a big, this is a controversial one. Oh my God. This is like such a controversial one. Like I can't, I can't even stress to you guys how much this was talked about at BlizzCon. Um, yes, it was talked about outside of BlizzCon as well, but uh, at BlizzCon, everybody you meet, it was like, it wasn't, hey, how was your BlizzCon so far? It was, hey, so, boy, <laughs> that announcement, huh? Like, it was, it was the, like, number one most talked about thing there. So, if you're living under a rock, uh, Diablo Immortal is a new Diablo title where you can slay demons and play with your friends and everything. Uh, and it is, um, available or will be available, uh, on mobile. Uh, <laughs> and here is Wyatt Chang to talk about it. Let's go ahead and throw it to him. BlizzCon, we love Diablo. We love the way Diablo has brought millions of players around the world together to slay demons. Our modern world is an increasingly connected one. Our mobile devices keep us closer than ever to our friends, family, and loved ones. So we knew we want to use mobile devices as the platform for a new Diablo game, because nothing brings a family together like slaying demons. <laughs> but we want to do it in a way that's true to Blizzard, putting gameplay first. We want to do it in a way that feels right for Diablo. We are making a full-fledged action RPG you can play it hurts to watch. It does. With everyone. Now, I have a cinematic now, to show you. But first, allow me to set the stage. Why don't we just pause it right there? It is painful. Uh, I feel bad for him, just like you guys do. He was probably tasked to work on this project, and he was like, dope, I'm going to work on this project. It's going to be awesome. Uh, yeah, we're going to... He probably obviously already knows, and we all know now, which we'll talk about in a second, that Diablo 4 is in the works. He's thinking, cool, I get to work on this other uh, project, and it's going to be amazing. Um, and so he gets to work on it, and it's coming out exactly the way he wanted. Everything's great. He presents it, and everybody says, <sighs> yeah, I don't know. Now, the crowd, the crowd did have a reaction. It wasn't as bad as some people say, or thought, I guess. Uh, the mood shifted a little bit because it was kind of like, oh, well, you know what? This isn't really what I want, but I'm sure in about five minutes, they're going to announce Diablo 4, so I'm chill, right? Or an expansion, or uh, a, new, a new hero class, right? Or a new uh, class, which they've done before. They've closed ceremonies with class with the uh, the necromancer in 2016 they closed that ceremony with with the necromancer class so it's it's not unheard of for that we 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 all thought we knew we thought we knew that something else was coming 
And so the mood shifted to just kind of like, oh, okay, great. If you play mobile, then, you know, whatever. This is great for you, right? But this is how it ended. Like, it just, it, and even just watching the end of this is a little painful. I'll see if I can find the timestamp here. Uh, I, I, I do. I feel, I feel for him uh, because it felt weird. Uh, as a, Yeah, so he basically, they got this clip of, of everybody Thank you. playing. We are going to have... Diablo Sorry. Immortal. <laughs> he's like, and he's stumbling we over words because he can the feel the crowd is never like, been whoa. A better time to be part of this incredible Blizzard community. We have a demo of Diablo Immortal playable here on the show floor in Hall D. And for those of you watching at home, Visit DiabloImmortal.com for more information about Diablo Immortal. There has never been a better time to explore everything that Blizzard has to offer here at BlizzCon and alongside the rest of this incredible Blizzard community. As you wander the show floor, take time to say I'm hi. I'm going to make you guys watch this so you can experience it with here me. Here at BlizzCon. Everybody at BlizzCon wearing the blue crew shirts at Blizzard would love to say hello. Have fun, make friends, and have an epic, epic BlizzCon. Thank you. That concludes. This concludes our opening ceremonies. All right. Now you guys can feel it. If you didn't see it before, now you guys can feel it. That was the real. That was a real. That was a real crowd reaction. That was what people. So when when, where do you start? Right. So there's a couple of different sides to this. Let me make sure I go in order here because there's a couple of different sides of this. There's, there are people saying, oh, those entitled you know, gamers or whatever, <laughs> like those entitled Blizzard fans, uh, you know, they, they're getting mad because the game's not made for them. Uh, what they don't, what those people don't understand is it's not that we don't give a fuck if there's a Diablo game on mobile. Yay, I have something to play while I take a shit. I might not ever play it, but I'll at least download it, right? But we don't care. We don't care. It's it's that it's that they ended a largely PC focused and supported convention with a mobile game and then passed it off like we were the dicks. Okay? That's the fucked up part. That should have been a press release. That should have been a blog post. That should have been PAX, Gamescom, literally anywhere else. They put that in the best for last slot and it did not belong in that slot at all. Uh, they should not have done that. If they ended, if they ended with Warcraft three, I think people would have been better off. We were sort of upset. It's like, oh, it's a rehash, but you know what? Fine. Whatever. You know, it's fine. We all got the mobile game, whatever. But it's the fact that they put it in a spot that made, made us feel like, whoa, do you really not understand us? Like, that's what it felt like. It's like, you really thought it's like when you get a present that like is so left field. You're like, this person doesn't know me. <laughs> like you get something that's just like, this person doesn't know me at all. There's just, there's like, if somebody bought me like a cooking kit, I never cook anything, but if somebody bought me like a, like a cooking kit, like a, uh, I don't know, like something, some kind of cooking kit, I, I would have been like, I, I don't fucking cook. I, I, I don't know this. I don't know how to cook or anything. Inferno, the cookbook's fine. That doesn't count. Uh, <laughs> I know I see you there. No, cookbook's fine. <laughs> I mean like, like gear, right? It's like, no. Uh, it just, it just doesn't make sense. Uh, Hillel, we're gonna get to that in a second. Um, there's also other things. NetEase is known for their clones. They have, uh, they have lots of clones for various popular games. Uh, and one of them also happens to be a BlizzCon, or sorry, a, uh, a Diablo clone. And there's a lot of speculation that this was just a reskin. So I found this site called Abacus News. I don't know if you guys have heard of it, but it's a Chinese, they're based out of uh, Hong Kong and they're a Chinese um, uh, uh, tech company or tech uh, tech blog. 
Uh, they cover a lot of different things, but for the most part, everything obviously is all like Chinese focus. And so they, what they do is they streamed them playing uh, on Twitch uh, this game called Endless of God, which looks a lot like Diablo Immortal. Now, I don't know if it's a clone. I don't know. But everybody, but you know, if you look at this game, if you looked at this game, you would say that's a Diablo 3 clone. 100%. Because we know there's already thousands of them out there. There's thousands of Diablo clones out there. Uh, and so that's what you'd say when you'd see that. Now, knowing that that's the same company that also made the uh, made Diablo Immortal, it's, it's, it stands to reason that, yeah, maybe, maybe they did take uh, an existing game and then redo assets. It is actually inarguable that they did this. Not necessarily a reskin in the sense of just, oh, reskin the whole thing because there's mechanics and everything to be put in as well. But they definitely started with something that they've already used before. They said, they does say, here, let me just play this. Let me go show you guys. If you haven't seen new red shirt guy, red shirt, a new red shirt guy 2.0. Um, let's go ahead and play this clip here. Hey, uh, just was wondering, is this uh, an out of season April Fool's joke? <laughs> uh, no, it's, it's, a, it's a fully... Uh, Fully fledged uh, Diablo experience on on mobile. So yeah. Hey, uh, just was one. The biggest dick on earth. Yes, yes, yes. I'll admit that is that is it is it is a dickish thing for this guy to do. <sighs> but I'm I'm partially glad that he did because it need something like this needed to resonate. Oh, you couldn't hear it. Oh, I'll play it again then. One more time. Wondering is this uh, an out of season April Fool's joke? Uh, no, it's it's a it's a fully uh, fully fledged uh, Diablo experience on on mobile. And that's it. This is the this is the only clip I have, unfortunately. Um, something like this needed to happen so that way uh, people can pick up on it. and It resonates with folks. It clearly resonates with folks. Uh, nuke the vibes. You can't see that clip. I know. I know. That's why I even asked you guys in uh, in chat. I said, please download this video in Discord. I was like, download this video because I'm afraid it's gonna disappear. And sure enough, it disappeared. Uh, yeah, it's a dick move, but it needed to be said. It did. It needed to be said because otherwise, like what? Otherwise, the community would happen, and then you know, I don't know. But uh, so that happened. Uh, then there's the. I might as well show you this too. The don't you guys have phones thing? That was uh, that was a thing. Oops. Is there any plans to make this playable on PC, or is this strictly mobile forever? Uh, are there any? Uh, yeah, th this the current plan is to be on mobile, both uh, Android and iOS. Uh, we don't have any plans at the moment to do uh, PC. Reaction. Do, do you guys not have phones? Yeah, you guys that, all have phones. Phone. Right? Ouch. Oh. oh, not probably not the best. I understand he's nervous. He's nervous. All right. Listen, he's nervous. Sometimes you say dumb stuff when you're put on the spot and you're nervous. But of all the dumb things that he could have said, that was the dumbest. Like that was definitely like, I don't know. It's the high, the higher. It was just, it was just the dumbest you could possibly just. So, because it makes, it makes people feel like, yes, we all have phones. We just didn't want this. <laughs> like, that's not the point, you know? That wasn't the point. Uh, we're not all like, oh, we don't have phones. No. So, it just made people feel like they were being dismissed. Um, and so this, on top of everything else, it was just a complete, just PR shit show. Uh, around Diablo Immortal. Just like, just a complete shit show. Um, other things that happened that maybe you guys weren't aware of, or maybe you were, but the main video is, I think, probably the, not this is one, there... sorry. Um, the main video for, uh, here we go, has, look at it right here. Can you see this? Hold on. Let me uh, go. Uh, uh, there we go. Just pause that right there. So that is its current likes. I don't know if you guys are familiar with thumbs up. Thumbs up means good. Thumbs down means bad. Uh, that's what it looks like right now. This is the official. 
the official uh, uh, client or sorry, a cinematic trailer that's on YouTube. Um, now, you could say it's being it's being review bombed. Oh, it's being review bombed. Uh, that's still a half a million people that chimed in and said that they didn't like it, even if they were trolling. Even if a percentage of them was trolling, let's say, let's say half, let's say half of them are trolling. That's still a quarter million people that are dissatisfied enough with the video that they took time to click on that thumbs down video. Um, it's a big deal. It's a big deal. Now, I found something else kind of interesting. Um, if we go over here, this is my actual client, right? Uh, if we go over here to da, 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 Diablo, they have the video here. If you click on it here, we're going to pop this out. It's going to go to another window here. Pull this over. This is actually another video. This is a different video altogether. 475,000 views, 818 likes, 43,000 dislikes. Some people are saying they're deleting dislikes and all that stuff. I haven't seen any proof of that. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and chalk it up to just the, this YouTube, which is being shitty, honestly. So I found this video, this video through the client, and, uh, and it has, obviously, fewer views. It's a different video. It's unlisted, and they're using that on their, uh, on their clients. <clears throat> it's still getting some thumbs down. Um, and I thought, I was like, you know, maybe, maybe they just, maybe this is just what they do. Maybe they, uh, they actually put unlisted videos in here. So I decided to go to the other videos and be like, okay, how about this one? Let's go ahead and pop this guy open. Boop, pop that open. This is a live video. It's a live video. There's no one listed there. Uh, if we go to, let's go to, what else got announcement? Overwatch, Overwatch, obviously. That one's live now. Awesome, let's see if we can toggle over here. There we go, reunion. We'll pop this open here. Also a live video. So clearly, this is something that they're doing on the side to try to try to, uh, I guess, field some of the negativity uh, for uh, uh, for Diablo Immortal. So this is damage control that we're witnessing right here, which I would do if I was them as well, because there's a lot of damage that's been done. <laughs> uh, some people are saying that they dislike the video and then they go back and they see that their video, that, that it was actually, uh, their dislike was removed. Uh, I, I actually, yesterday I disliked the video and then came back today before the show and checked and my dislike was still there. So I can't, I can't speak to that, unfortunately, but I believe you, if you say that you put it on there and it was gone, I will tell you from a long history of working with YouTube that they sometimes fuck this stuff up. So if something's getting review bombed, it's entirely possible that when you refresh something, it's going to say one number, refresh it again, the number goes down, refresh it again, it goes down, refresh it again, it goes up 100,000. Like it's just, I, I feel like that's just something that, that is uh, uh, part of YouTube um, itself. And oh, now we have the social blade. Yeah, the social blade is obviously not going to be pretty. Uh, let's get this thing loaded here. So you got it. Thanks. Uh, now, nah, you know what? There's not no infor information here that I'm going to be able to really use uh, that we don't already see, except for the percentages. I mean, I'll show you the percentages. Uh, so Diablo Immortal Cinematic Trailer, 2.6%. This is the percentage metric that's derived from the likes and dislikes from a specific video. You can see the most, I mean, what is it like? No, they don't, I can't sort it here. But you can see most of the videos float around by 60 and 80, 90%. And then we have 2.6%, 3.4%. Um, so... Woo, man. And the memes that came out of this, of course, were huge. There were so many things that, uh, that, that sprung up from this. People making their own Diablo 4 stuff. Uh, obviously, there's people that are, that are coming out and saying things. Uh, Mark Kern, somebody who's very familiar with uh, running video games into the ground, says, since I was producer on Diablo 2, a lot of people have been asking for my thoughts. Hate to say it, but what you're seeing is Blizzard not understanding gamers anymore. Again, Mark Kern is an expert in this matter. Those of you guys ever follow Firefall. Uh, there is obviously PlayDiablo4.com. You can go there uh, if you want to check it out for yourself. Please do so. Um, what else? What else? Uh, so, wait, real quick. Uh, yeah, obviously I'm going to bust Mark Kern's mall, balls on this stuff, but he's not wrong with the next line. He says, there is nothing wrong with having a mobile version of Diablo. In fact, I would have wanted one as an option, but the way it was hinted at and presented and the failure of Blizzard management to predict the backlash caught me by surprise. Blizzard used to be really gamer driven. And it does feel, he's not wrong about that. He, 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 it does feel like, like 
they've lost touch a little bit with this. It's a misstep. We're going to call it a misstep. I don't want to say they lost touch because that's such, that's such a uh, such a broad thing to say. I don't feel like Blizzard as a whole is like lost touch of the gamers. I just feel like this is a misstep that they're going to learn from and then move on from there. Um, <laughs> I'm not going to open that. <laughs> uh, Next thing we saw was Blizzard doing a bunch of interviews with, um, uh, with uh, first it was Kotaku and Polygon. Now, in my opinion, it looks like there's a lot of backlash. I mean, obviously, there's a lot of backlash. Blizzard can't come out and say, you guys are being childish or whatever. They would be incorrect if they said this. Uh, some people were probably, yes, absolutely. I'm not saying that everybody who has a negative opinion about Immortal uh, is, uh, is right, because again, I feel like it's fine if there's a mobile game, just don't make it the main event at your PC uh, uh, convention. Um, but it feels like when you, go, when you go to do damage control with sites like Kotaku and Polygon, uh, that makes you feel like, oh, okay, so you're going to mobilize their army to uh, to go and start talking about how we're like, uh, oh, maybe, how can we spin this into this, us being misogynist? How how can we spin it, all of us, oh, you don't like Diablo Immortal? You're a misogynist. Somehow, it always comes back to this. If it hasn't already, uh, someone always comes back to this. Oh, you're entitled, you're an entitled prick and all this stuff. It's like, okay, cool. Well, my opinion just doesn't really matter anymore, I guess. Um, so they went, they did their damage control with uh with various sites and everything and it just it that rubbed me the wrong way personally uh with the way that it was presented it's like oh you know we feel like it's fine it's like you know how about you just recognize that maybe you were wrong <laughs> maybe you were just you made a, you made an error all right a misstep come on man um and then and then this morning some of you guys already mentioned this in chat this morning uh also on kotaku uh they're not all bad just mostly uh <laughs> also on kotaku they said, uh, uh, they did already as when we played mobile more. It's so it's such as every piece. Oh my God. Yeah. I'm sure that's written somewhere. Um, it says sources say Blizzard pulled Diablo 4 announced it from BlizzCon. And every time. No, thanks. Um, and so, okay. So maybe they had one and they pulled it. In which case they really owe Chang a, a, like a vacation. And a blog post saying we're sorry, maybe, for putting them, uh, for putting him out there to close something that they probably, that somebody knew, somebody had to know that this wasn't going to resonate. So this basically goes on to discuss about how they did have a Diablo 4 announcement, but they, um, but they decided to pull it at the last minute. The dude was a sacrifice, exactly. Did I read this article? I, no, I didn't read that one. But I honest, honestly, I've read so many articles about this, and and I don't know, I was there. Um, yeah, uh, on, I probably isn't anything in here that I've already talked about uh, or that I already commented on. But uh, but thanks, flipped. Um, I don't know if you just got we 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 covered a lot of this stuff already. Uh, yeah, so Diablo Four, I guess we can like wait and tell you. Okay, flipped. Okay, yeah, we talked about it already. We're good. Um. Diablo 4, yeah, I guess it's supposed to be an announcement coming out on uh, uh, at BlizzCon for Diablo 4. It didn't happen. And really, really, all they needed to do, all they needed to do was just show us the Diablo logo and just talk to us. Talk to us like fucking people, man. Like, just say, hey, we wanted to show you guys something that we're working on for Diablo 4. You guys know we're working on it. Of course we are. We don't have anything for you now. We apologize. Fucking something! Just fucking say something! You don't have to be... It doesn't have to be... Everything that comes out of your mouth doesn't have to be a major fucking announcement. Right? It doesn't have to be on the grandest stage. We're gonna have this huge announcement. You can talk to us. And we will understand. We'll be disappointed. We'll be disappointed. You'll have us a percentage of people that might be like... Like, oh man, like I would have loved to have got more, but but at least we know that it's in the it's in the works. At least we know. But instead they didn't. They try to play it off like that was it. Like that was like like that was all we could expect. We know that they're working on Diablo 4. We want them to talk to us. 
We want them to talk to us and tell us. Uh, so yeah, title card and Decker Kane VO exactly. Just the voice, just the voice. Even if it said soon, and if it was Decker Kane saying soon, <laughs> we would have we would have understood. We know they're working on it. Yes, disappointment would have been better than major disappointment. Thank you. Exactly. What's the harm? There's no harm in just, in just, yeah. Yeah, I mean, they may not have a name for it, but they can say, uh, Diablo 4, Kane is dead. Ah, but you know, it's fine. We could still, we could just, <laughs> uh, yeah, there, there, there was just so many other ways they could have done it. And, uh, yeah, they just did it the worst possible way they could. And, and, and now they're getting, they're getting, they're getting a lot of negative feedback and, uh, the press seems to be pretty, um, well, I mean, the press is like a mixed bag, you know, like, yeah, there are people out there who are like, I don't want you to dedicate resources to a mobile game. Don't worry about those folks. Uh, because this was not a project that required a ton of Blizzard and Diablo resources, all right? NetEase developed it. It was a game that previously existed that they built Diablo Immortal on top of. And this is just me speculating, but that's what it looks like. Uh, so it wasn't necessarily something that required a ton of internal Blizzard dev resources. Not so much that's going to have a, a massively negative impact on Diablo 4's development. So, so the whole, like, there shouldn't be a Diablo on mobile, I think is the in in incorrect answer because there are a lot of folks who maybe will be new to the franchise because of this. It, it's, it's probably going to be wildly successful. It probably will be, right? Uh, but it just, it just need, didn't need to be done. Uh, they didn't need to present it in the way that they did. Uh, and then everything that followed needed to, uh, uh, all the fiasco that, 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 that ensued did not need to happen either. Um, but yeah, it could have been simple. Uh, we got some Diablo 4 stuff we can't show you. We really wish we could. We know you're going to love it. It's going to be awesome. Everyone would be like, we know we're going to love it. We love you for telling us that. And that would have been it. We would have been a little bit happier. Ah, oh, man. Um, so, Blizzard news aside, Blizz official Blizzard announcement news and everything aside, uh, unless actually, oh, let me go through chat here. I'm sorry. It was, so much stuff to cover. I'm trying to zoom through it. Let's see, there was uh, one great moment at BlizzCon happened during the WoW Q and A. Uh, yeah, uh, um, Metzen showed up, and he uh, he. Uh, it was clearly not not a uh, um, a scheduled thing. Is that the Metzen clip? I didn't show it. I should show it, huh? Yeah, I knew that was that. <laughs> yeah, let's go ahead and show it. Yeah, we might as well show this because this Next is a pretty question. good deal. Thank you for that. Oh. <laughs> All right, so Mr. Johnson, I have I have two questions. And Alliance, I, I don't want to offend you. The first question is Horde, where are you at? <laughs> Good. I'm glad you're here. Oh, hell. Alliance, where are you at? <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. My question is on behalf of the Horde. Good Lord. Everyone, can we have a round of applause for Alex's sexy V-neck? <laughs> Look at that. <sighs> it's one of the things I miss most about work is that sexy man right there. <laughs> The second question is, <laughs> when is the Horde getting its true war chief back? <laughs> that was it. Thrall? Oh. You're talking about Thrall? Thrall. Wait, who? Thrall? Only Scott and Ian is going to be there. <laughs> <laughs> I think he means yeah, Thrall. He, he Alex, you want to you do that one? I, I could feel it, probably. <laughs> I miss you. <laughs> um, we, we all do. Uh, that's a great question, person I've never met before. <laughs> <laughs> I had no idea you'd be here. Uh, <laughs> you know, is that you get your job back? I'm gonna guess. I will surmise 
there may very well be a job posting up soon on the Orgamar War Board looking for new war chief. I don't know, it might happen. And if there is, we'll call you. <laughs> Hey, love you guys. I miss you. Ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> so that was a that was a great moment. Chris that was a great moment. Everybody everybody was real uh was real pleased to see Meta. I mean, of course, of course. I mean, yeah, the the heart and soul for like for the horde, really. Just the voice, just the voice is is enough, you know? Um Yeah, so so that was just that was just them just dicking off. I mean He's not he's not part of the Blizzard uh, uh machine anymore. So he could just come in and just do silly stuff like this and just kind of be himself and you know do whatever. Uh yeah, it's it's great. He doesn't acknowledge Sylvanas as war chief. Oh, probably not. Um Yeah, he uh uh had some man candy. Oh, hey, I haven't heard that word before. I like that. Uh yeah, it, it it's funny because it's like if if Thrall ever came back as the as the Horde uh, 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 War Chief, I wonder what that would do to the community. Like, I wonder if there'd be like a renewed um, interest. Like, I don't, however they want to bring it back, however they want to do it, whatever story crap they want to do to make it happen, uh, I think people would accept whatever it is. <clears throat> Part of the deal for the time is that he's coming back to do video. I, he already actually mentioned this before, I believe that. Uh, that he's available, that even though he's leaving the company, he's still going to be available for Thrall-related things. Uh, or for, like, whatever they need, really. I mean, like, I mean, it's, 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 of course he's always going to be around. He's just going to basically go and live his life and just, you know, live his life, I guess. I don't know what he does in his free time, but he's just going to go and just have a ball and just do whatever. Uh, and, uh, and that's it. And so... Yeah, yeah, sure. You know, I got. I mean, I, I'm free. Yeah, sure. Why not? I'm not doing anything this uh, this coming week. I'll come down and record some stuff for you guys. I got it. So that kind of stuff, I think, is great. Yeah, he earned his time to chill. Absolutely. Um, it's Thrall the War Chief in Classic. He is. Looks totally different though. <laughs> like totally different. Uh, yeah. Like if you if you if you haven't seen the original uh, character model for Thrall, uh, it's it's pretty funny actually. Let me pull it up here. See Thrall Classic. Wow. Let's see if I can find it here. Then I do. Here we go. So there he is. I didn't. I didn't. It's funny because when I when I first started playing, I thought it was a warrior. <laughs> like I didn't know. I had no idea. I thought it was a warrior when I first saw him. When I was new, I was new. I was like, oh, that's like a, yeah, the it was a warrior. Of course, the warrior is going to be leading everything. I had no idea. He was totally tucked away. Yeah, all the way in the back. <laughs> if you have like okay, for those of you guys who who were only came around after Cataclysm. Uh, like Thrall was like in the back, like it was in the back. It was like a room there. It's like, oh shit, we forgot to put the throne room in. <laughs> Let's put it in this walkway that goes back to this other area. Um, <laughs> it was it was not the, the the best design when they when they moved when they moved them to the front like front and center in the main uh, in the main entrance area. That made more sense. That made more sense. Uh, but yeah, he was a sh warrior shaman multi class. There you go. He could just do whatever. Just they were making it up as they went along. Um with unkillable too with Vulgin and Sarfang. Yeah. Yeah, when I when I did uh, uh like well, I don't want to get onto a tangent here, but when I did the uh, um I think I was was I alliance I think it was Horde when we did the kill all the leaders. I think we went and killed all the alliance leaders. Uh and that was easy. Because the alliance was a bunch of bitches. We just walked in there and just killed them. It was awesome. Um <laughs> Stormwind obviously gave us the biggest the biggest uh, uh problem but it was easy to get in we just like flew over just j jumped in it was awesome <laughs> it was really great um anyways 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 but uh no it was uh, uh i'm looking forward to whatever whatever medicine wants to do in terms of like coming back and doing something uh so uh blizzcon itself let's talk about we're done with blizzcon um um news like official blizzcon news uh, so yeah, BlizzCon, from a personal experience standpoint, is really awesome. Like, it really, it really truly is, like, my favorite convention, uh, that I've ever gone to. Uh, I go almost every year. I've only missed, I've only missed one year, actually, since I started going back in 2010, I think was my first year, 2010. Um, and each year, just being able to like hang out with with 
with a lot of you guys and um drink and just bullshit and just i don't know just talk about like random shit because we all pretty much have the same likes you know um it's great it's great uh, I, I like i like just being able to just chill out and just hang with friends i feel like i see you guys like once a year and uh and it's i mean it's great the people make the experience the people really do make the experience blizzcon it wouldn't be blizzcon without uh without the the experience i mean you know i like, compare it to like twitchcon twitchcon feels a bit more like a competition in, in some regards where it's like you know we're not really there because we all like the same thing we're there because we're all trying to step over each other to get to the to get to the same goal which is like the top streamer on on twitch and all that stuff and it doesn't quite have the same that you know it doesn't quite feel like this where you're like kind of there to kind of bond and just uh you know fucking hang out at the fucking bar and whatever um so yeah i'm looking forward to next year already uh probably go ahead and book my uh, hotel now <laughs> book my hotel now uh because the prices are so goddamn expensive and uh and yeah marriott is the only hotel you could walk into and find jesse cox Crandor, tally and Laura. you know what actually um i was there all three nights i was there all three nights i didn't see them once uh i think that they were primarily at the hilton i couldn't i can't stand the hilton uh the dj thing is too much i like i like to talk with folks without yelling um the whole time and, and like i mean those of you guys who were there with us, like it was, it was nice. It was perfect. We just, we hung out out back, you know, we had a table out back we had a big table with like a ton of people. Uh, everyone was just hanging out just bullshitting. Uh, the, the previous night we were in the bar, we had a table right at the bar and just, just hanging out, whatever. Like it was, it was just great. It was just great. And like no fucking loud, crazy music, uh, just people. Uh, and that's the, uh, that's the thing I really love about, about BlizzCon um the hilton dj which is not blizzard's fault by the way uh that's uh the hilton basically deciding hey we, sh we should have a dj down for these nights for some fucking reason <clears throat> they have diablo yeah so next year next year should we so arc should we start the uh the speculation now what should we expect next year <laughs> diablo 4 wow expansion new hearthstone expansion new overwatch game mode sure those are all very viable um what else do we get? I, I feel like once they weather this storm, they're pretty much free to do whatever they want next year because they're definitely going to have things to announce, which means they don't have to give us a new Warcraft movie, Brian. They don't have to give us a new IP. Uh, they don't have to give us that stuff because they'll already have, they could save that for the next year. Unless, and let, maybe, maybe they could squeeze one of me a while movie be all right, actually. Rock and roll racing remastered, classic service being shut. Damn. Might get a blue post telling us to turn down the hype. Aw. Every other year seems to be a good BlizzCon year. At, from a personal exp uh, uh, experience, every year gets better. From, a, from an announcement experience, uh, every year seems to be getting worse. <laughs> like, at least the goodie bags uh, were pretty bad this year. I'm mad, mad about that. Um, Destiny 3 booed for making an announcement. Yes. Oh, yeah. That's actually, I would like to speculate on that. I do think that we're going to start seeing Destiny show up on the floor. They already made, some of you guys may have missed it, but prior to the uh, opening ceremony, they already had uh, uh, Cotton. I can't remember his name. Um, but I think he's like the lead game design, uh, developer, designer uh, for, um, uh, for Destiny 2. And they made an announcement before and everyone was like boo like seriously the crowd was booing them uh the announcement was that you can get destiny 2 for free and uh uh if you if we have to like get it between now and the 19th i believe uh so if you have if you have a battle net accounts which a lot of you guys have just go and download destiny and activate it or whatever and uh you'll have it for free forever you, the expansions and everything obviously you have to uh, pay for later but just do yourself a favor and just download and get it because it doesn't hurt just to have it active on your account. Um, one of these years, you might think, oh, I'm going to go ahead and just hop in and just try it out. Um, but but they booed. And they, he was booed loudly, loudly. Um, I'm surprised it didn't. I, it, well, I don't know if it came through on the mics, actually. I couldn't find the actual video of the announcement. Um, but it was quite loud. And it wasn't because, I mean, it wasn't, it, it was, it was rude. Sure. But it was because it doesn't belong there. It's BlizzCon, not Acticon. Uh, 
And so that's my biggest fear is that, you know, all good things come to an end. And it's entirely possible that as as uh, BlizzCon gets bigger, it starts presenting more and more products. And eventually BlizzCon will turn into kind of an E3 where like if you go and you play, let's say, three uh, of the titles that Activision Blizzard uh, has, you won't be able to relate to the other people that play maybe three completely different titles uh, because... Yeah, because you just you just never played those games. Because I, yeah, why would I play Call of Duty when I play World of Warcraft and Hots or something? Uh, so it's I feel like the bigger it gets, it could potentially splinter splinter the community more and more. Uh, and then eventually, you know, maybe ten years from now or less, uh, we'll be sitting here and we'll be like, "Wow, remember when BlizzCon was great? <laughs> remember when BlizzCon was like was small and like you you got to know it was small being like 75,000 people right? and you knew everybody and all your friends were there and everything and now it's like Call of Duty Con and everything like I know I said hots I know I should have uh, whatever <laughs> when BlizzCon had Blizzard games yeah so it's like it's entirely possible that we might uh, uh see a trend towards bringing in more Activision games and um and that'll be a sign the end is near we'll see but, um, make bliz, uh, <laughs> remember when the tickets were a hundred bucks? Yeah, I know. Remember when the hotels were also like a hundred bucks a night and I was like $400 a night. Jesus. Getting a game machine gun for your, uh, blizzard games. Oh yeah. Yeah. Hunters, hunters. Jeez. Ash. Yep. Um, yeah, that's when we'll start seeing like destiny characters in, uh, um, in I was going to call it Blizzard or Stall Stars, actually. Hots. That's when you'll see that. I mean, they already they already now have the first original character with Orphea. She's the first original character that was that's actually from the Hots universe, I guess. Uh, and so, yeah, I mean, why, why not? Why not put um, Cade in? Wait, is Cade already in? No, he's not. Okay. Um, why not put Cade into... Uh, uh, in there, Anna has a destiny skin in Hots. So there you go. That's that's there you go. That's that's your first half step. They're good. They, it's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. They're gonna start bringing this stuff in. It's gonna happen. Um, Caden Hots might actually make me play it. Well, there you go. It's uh, but just just know just know that it's the first step towards integrating a lot of the Activision stuff, even more so than it already is into Blizzard stuff. It's already in the Battle.net launcher. So why not have it at BlizzCon? <laughs> we'll see uh but i think i think that marks the end of this show which is great because this sweater i'm burning up if you're watching on youtube make sure you catch this show every friday unless it doesn't happen on that friday for some reason like this friday for example uh and uh uh you catch it live you can be part of the part of the lovely co-host section right over here you guys want to say goodbye to chat or to uh, to YouTube? <laughs> to all the YT folks? Uh, you can catch me at twitter.com slash aka Mike B. Twitch.tv slash aka Mike B. Obviously, if you think I'm wrong about something, you're probably incorrect, but go ahead and leave a comment uh, down below if you would like. And, uh, <laughs> and Or if you agree with me, that's fine too. Uh, <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Uh, real quick, remember that guy Um Dust? Remember Um Dust? He has a twit longer that he posted. I'm, I suggest you guys go and read. We talked about him last week. He's the uh, God Complex guy, right? He has a twit longer, and you know what? After reading this, I get it. I get it now. I understand. I understand. He fucked up. He owns it. I'm gonna read you the TLDR. I'm not saying he's not a dickhead, right? In some respects, but he recognizes he fucked up. TLDR, the past weekend, I made a fool of myself and grossly misspoke during a panel I was a part of. What I said was absolute garbage, and I made a horrible example of the gaming and streaming communities. I'm sorry for not better preparing myself for the panel and for being a jackass and how I, and, and with how I chose to respond with it prior to now. So, I, w I read this and I was like, you know what? What else do we want from the guy? What else do we got? What do we want? An apology might be kind of nice and maybe see that in action as he continues to grow. Uh, so good luck to him. I, yeah, he's probably still a dick. Uh, and that how he runs his channel. Yeah, he, he has made a lot of changes to how he runs his channel, but that's how he wants to do it. That's fine. That's fine. I'm not saying all is forgiven, but I understand that he fucked up and I appreciate, I appreciate that 
he uh, he's come out and he's, he recognizes that he says something stupid. Um, so good luck to him. And that's it. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys. Do I have some music lined up? What the hell? Let me see. Oh, yeah.